In just a few hours, the doors to this temporary art gallery will open. For the artists here, it's one of the biggest moments of the year, a time to finally share their work with the outside world. The impact of the work on some people, like just the, their expression or their impact, you can see it in their faces when they walk into your studio. That's just so fulfilling, like I love that. Pilar Melis is one of hundreds of visual artists exhibiting at the 24th annual East Side Culture Crawl this year. Normally, thousands of people attend the free event. They get a behind the scenes look at where and how art is made. But this year, the pandemic has changed all that. Like any other industry, the arts are learning to adapt in the new COVID reality. They're gambling that the changes they make will keep them relevant to the thousands of patrons that support them every year. When we first went into lockdown in early March, that I didn't believe that we would be standing here today having this conversation. The festival prides itself on offering one-on-one -on -one connections with artists, but COVID restrictions mean in-person viewings are limited this year and only available by booking online. For some, that's a relatively minor obstacle that's well worth the effort. I think it's important to be able to do what you can. Um, and I really enjoy the culture crawl every year. Otherwise, studio tours this year are mostly available online. The festival says that's helped some artists reach more people than ever, but it's a big change for the audience and the artists who rely on their patronage during the festival. It's funny, when you sell a piece, you always think, how many months of rent is that? Like that's, <laughs> that's usually how I calculate. I sell a piece, okay, that's one or two months or three months or whatever, and if it's four months, then it's like, yeah. Still, organizers say moving the bulk of the festival online will actually have long-term benefits. They say it's just another example of how artists have learned the fine art of survival. Well, the one thing I can say about the arts community, well, two words, creative resilience. And I think every single arts organization is going to find a way to move around this pandemic and be able to produce work, present work in whatever capacity. Marie Seidler, CBC News, Vancouver.